What is up everyone? Today I'm actually going to be doing something I haven't done in a long time, and that is actually provide commentary over a scrim. Now I actually did this over the weekend, and there's not too much to it, which is why I'm actually going to be doing commentary over this. So first off, I just want to mention that I have been I've been playing a lot of mini splatling in 52 lately, which is what you're going to mostly be seeing in this whole scrim. So the first thing I always do with a mini in every match is to charge up a missile immediately for callouts. Missiles are probably one of the the few things that people haven't realized what they can truly do and just providing information through using missiles does a lot for your team. The build that I'm using is a peer of uh, special charge up which is a peer being uh, the main matching the three subs. The shirt that I have is Ink Saber Sub with Ink Recovery, and then the shoes are all swim speed. Now, basically what I do is I just constantly try to cover and provide information through the missiles. The mini spotling, though no longer being a high mobility based weapon, is still very good for coverage. And that's mainly what I play it for, is for the coverage, and then the missiles just being a really good extra on top of the weapon itself. So I guess while there's not really much going on right now, I just want to say that this won't be a normal thing. I'm not going to be doing this for every scrim that happens from this point on. I'm doing it for this one because it's pretty short. We didn't go for very long because the people we played against had to leave. And so it, like, it didn't end up being as long as a typical scrim for us would be. Uh, a normal one I wouldn't commentate over because it, it would just take too long. So... This match, Moray Towers, Rainmaker, I think this is by far the worst match for me in this entire scrim. Now, I'm playing 52 Gal. The uh, gear I'm wearing is a Peer of Special Saber, a Peer of sp uh, Special Power Up, and the Peer of Swim Speed. The reason I'm wearing Special Saber is because uh, in the case the event that I die, I actually have him closer back up to my baller than I, I, you know, just having, being basically being back up close to having the baller. The 52 isn't great at coverage, and so just being able to have the special and stay close to it is a very important thing, and I honestly feel like having special saver on it would be worth more than having special charge, as it's not something that like I'm going to actively be going for. However, it's something that I'd always like to have access to, if that makes sense. And then the special power is simply because it gives the baller more health, allowing you to tank more damage before it breaks. So a lot of this, the mid game here is me throwing point sensors. Point sensors are another thing that get ignored pretty often, and they just, not a lot of people realize how helpful they are. Uh, they are definitely better than they were before. Uh, in my opinion, I didn't really like point sensors in the first game, but I like them now because they act as a a sort of like you cannot you cannot go this way anymore. They act because they're stationary; no one wants to go into them and be marked. And then just providing a mark for your team does a lot more, and just provides a good handful of information. Now, like I said, this match doesn't go very well for me. In fact, this match was actually a <clears throat> it was kind of a problem. This charger on the other team did a very good job at being a dominating presence. And I've mentioned it before in a previous video where I said that the chargers uh, aren't as good as they were before. And I, in a way that got misconstrued and people thought that I was not being kind to the chargers. But that was that was not the intent. The, the intention for that was to point out that chargers are... They're, they're not, uh, like, oh, that was also one thing that I messed up on, so really. Uh, they're just not as, you know, they're just different, and they have to be played differently now. But this charger definitely gave us a, uh, uh, gave us a problem. Right there, when I fell off the map, the one thing I like to do on this with Moray is I will jump from this spot up onto that ramp that leads up to the snipe, and then I'll use Baller to climb that wall. My jump ended up getting stuck. Uh, and I balled as I fell, and uh, that was that. Usually, uh, you can't ball up that ramp because the baller doesn't like going up ramps like that for some reason. So that's why I jumped to that ramp and then used baller to climb out that wall. We basically had a, a huge issue where 
we were trying to constantly pressure the charger, but the charger kept getting really good shots on us the second we would approach him. And so it took us a little while to finally get him out of position. The enemy team's biggest problem here was not capitalizing on the charger basically destroying us this entire game. As you can see, it's almost, it's two minutes past, or it's, there's only two minutes left rather, and they've only pushed it to 93. They could have done a lot more if they had actually done something with the fact that the charger had been giving us a problem the entire game. So here we finally were able to make a move because we got the charger down, and this, it took me a little while to kill that guy because the RNG on the, the 52 is still not all that great. So we finally are able to make a move and actually get points on the board. And this is, this uh, I'm just going to say it now, we, we basically just get a push that doesn't get countered. I could have gone for more points there. I probably should have, but, you know, I don't know. It's, I definitely am one of the, uh, the kind of pe person that will just push for points, because in reality, having more points is better than just, you know, trying to get kills with it. Constantly throwing point sensors uh, here. I think yeah, I jump up here to challenge this guy because I thought he didn't notice me And then I just got bad RNG and so I just decided to retreat to give everyone a jump out or a jump in rather And then I just get my I sit here and throw point sensors at their snipe to bother anyone that's gonna be climbing up there The bigger point sensor radius actually really helps doing this and I get marked by a missile So I back up I'm going to be sitting with my baller here to try and stop him from moving. Um, we keep the Rainmaker pop so there's coverage in mid and uh, having the having coverage on the, in the map makes it to where they have to paint to get back in and it makes it very obvious where they're going to be coming from. I think I actually make a mistake here. I, yeah, I use a baller. My plan was to uh, explode and kill anyone that's trying to come to the Rainmaker but the Stingray actually pushed me into the Rainmaker making me grab it. And that was a, that was a little unfortunate. But yeah, the point the pro the the point was to just explode on the rainmaker and scare them from getting close. But the rainmaker dies anyway, so it doesn't really matter. This is, like I said, by far the worst match for me. Uh, I still don't really like playing Moray Towers. I'm still in like the process of trying to figure out what I want to play on this map and mode. But the whole point of playing scrims is to test things and figure things like this out. Next one up is TC Manta Maria. Now this is, this map, I really still haven't played too much of this. This is probably the mode I've played the most. So we, I've got a bit more familiarity with this mode as opposed to Zones and Rainmaker. Stuck with the 52 here because having the ability to use baller to at least push the tower slightly is better than uh, constantly applying missiles. A lot of what you're going to be seeing here is me playing mini for zones and 52 for rainmaker and uh, tower control because the faster kill time for the 52 is a little bit worth more than the extra added coverage. So a lot of what I do in this the whole mental game here is to throw point sensors to make the enemy you know make them move and unlike them I'm not really afraid to be marked I was never afraid of being marked in the first game and I still don't really get scared from being marked by point sensors so <clears throat> I see that there are two people shooting me we're making calls like I didn't record the voice chat but I'm constantly calling out where enemies are um, constantly throwing point sensors so they're aware of where everyone is I think, yeah, everyone ends up dying around here, so I end up having to back up. Barely get killed, almost escaped. The heavy ended up getting me. So there isn't really too much going on. We are just trying to hold mid while everyone is getting back in. We end up uh, losing one with our rapid went down. This is actually another thing. The, the player or person on our team playing rapid had, was testing rapid. I don't think he actually ever plays rapid. The only blaster he plays is the custom one. So what I'm just trying to do is provide coverage and throw point sensors for people. I can see the heavy. Get him out of there. Spots like that, like the being on the mast is a really 
strong point for weapons that have long range, like the heavy splatling or uh, rollers. That's just a strong spot, so I need to make sure that he was not up there and needed to be removed from that spot immediately. Throw a point center and mark the rapid. I think he ends up getting killed. Yeah, he did. So, sitting on the tower, push it myself. I see someone up on their overlook. Uh, the heavy shooting at me. I'm backing up so he doesn't kill me. Just trying to keep the spot turfed and trying to keep the tower from retreating fully. The one thing you can do, even if you're afraid to push the tower yourself, one thing you should always be doing is at least stalling the tower by jumping on it. If you're too afraid of pushing it yourself, then you you might want to always at least keep the tower from going completely neutral. So even like if you're afraid and you don't want to push it or your teammates are all down, but you're still in a, a spot where you can touch the tower, you should probably touch it to make sure that it doesn't go all the way back. And that's what we do is we spend a lot of this just tapping the tower. I end up getting someone but dying to the 10 attack as I probably shouldn't have gone for that guy. Though I didn't expect the RNG on the 52 to screw me up as much as it did. Uh, but you gotta, you gotta roll with the punches, I guess. They're continuing to push while I'm getting back here and getting to mid. As you can see, it didn't take me long to get my baller back. And that's, you know, what Special Saver, I feel, is a little underrated. It is uh, The one thing that uh, doesn't really help the Special Saver right now is a lot of people feel that a lot of specials aren't worth having Special Saver for. But in my opinion, at least Baller and maybe Missiles are the two specials that I would think are, are worth having Special Saver on just for those. So we're just keeping mid, keeping them marked, trying to prevent them from getting close. This is like, moments like this are why I would want to have the voice chat, just kind of like to replace any commentary I can give, because the callouts where we were doing would provide more info than what you're seeing up from my point of view right now. And this is something where I would actually like to have a person that does a overhead view so you can get a better feel of what's going on rather than just watching my point of view. And I think I was the only one recording this. I'm not quite sure, but yeah, so it would be nice to have a more perspective, but you know, that, that, I just can't really provide that. <laughs> so. Just continuing to hold mid. Not really trying to move. I see that everyone everyone but me dies right here. And so I throw a point sensor in the path of the tower. So no matter what, they're going to get marked. I sit there because I was going to give people jumps. But they told me they were going to swim back in. So I jump back here to kill the two people hiding back. Getting some coverage. Making sure they can't move. And then we just get on tower so it goes away from being neutral. And that's one thing about staying on the tower like that is even if it's in the neutral position, getting on it basically tells the game that you are in fact in control of it. Because sometimes even, like, I don't think the game would have considered us in control because they had touched the tower before it had gone to neutral. So it might have, you know, counted as their tower. And so we had to basically confirm that it was ours before overtime had kicked in. So zones, uh, track, this, this is probably one of the better matches, and this is a good match that I feel showcases how annoying a mini splatling can still be. People constantly complained about the mini splatling in the first game, mostly because the Zinc Minis kit was very powerful. And because of the changes made to mobility on the splatlings, a lot of people have considered that the mini isn't as pesky as it used to be. But this match is a... it showcases how annoying this weapon can still be. So, like I mentioned, I play for a very missile-based kit. Because using missiles not only apply, apply pressure and give marks to the end of your teammates, actually, because they can see the little reticle on the person, but it's also good for callouts. And then missiles do, in fact, cover back for the, uh, the special. The missiles landing on the ground actually cover turf and will charge your special because using missiles instantly depletes the bar. So it allows you to help charge back up for missiles. The enemy team instead prioritized having a heavy splatling, which can sit back farther than I can. However, uh, the kit doesn't really... like it, the, the sprinkler is okay for zones, but the stingray doesn't do much 
uh, in comparison to having missiles. So I'm just sitting on this uh, this lip area here and just constantly covering the zone. The increased range on the mini that it got in this game compared to the first one allows it to cover a decent amount of the zone. And then like I said, just constantly put uh, outputting missiles, throwing burst bombs to basically pick out enemies. The one thing uh, in the first game, the mini spotting I played the most was the refurbished mini. Uh, I actually ended up maxing that one out. So having a burst bomb on the mini feels a lot more natural to me than it did for uh, basically anyone else that played mini in the first game. And one thing you'll see a lot of when uh, with me playing this is I will follow up a full charged uh, uh, full charge mini with a burst bomb to basically pick off people that are barely alive after the full charge. So end up getting the mini or the heavy out, which was important. Here is something like everyone dies. It's just me. I was hoping that that would have been enough to cap the zone and keep it but unfortunately the the bubbles that they blew ended up uh, covering the zone and giving it back to them right there is a good example of using uh, some shots and then using burst bombs to pick people off so here we we essentially kind of wipe them except this guy who I ended up getting just barely and then I end up having to back up because I'm really really weak and the heavy or somebody that was shooting at me and I had to back up just constantly outputting ink. A, a more safe spot than that lip that I was sitting at would be right there below the fence because then I can just constantly do this but then if there's you know like with that ten attack if they were in a position where they were over there that they could un pester me more than if I was sitting over here. I move over here because I wanted people to jump to me but everyone was uh, going to instead paint forward and get their specials before coming in so I just stay over here by myself. The Tenetech for some reason doesn't chase me he throws a burst bomb at me to I guess uh, warn me that he's there but he honestly should have just chased me down because I was in a bad situation compared to him he was in a, a good spot to get a kill but he didn't follow me so waiting for everyone to respawn I'm just constantly trying to paint the zone and just continuously missile them just providing coverage cons or just basically constantly cover, uh, providing coverage for them and that's like I said that's something it still does very well it never stopped covering very well and in fact it actually got a range buff in this game which allows it to cover even better than it did in the first game it just no longer has high mobility which I have actually stopped running run speed on the mini splatling None of my kits for, or none of my builds for uh, the mini splatling utilize run speed anymore. Just because the the base mobility just doesn't really do much. It's not going to do much for it anymore. So I just don't bother using it. So there, I spent that entire match just outputting missiles, getting kills, painting zone, and I didn't die a single time. And that's that is a a match that showcases how annoying this weapon can be. And there, eight kills and nine missiles. That is a that is a sign that you have actually run into me in this. Is if I missile that much. Next up is Inkblot Rainmaker. I'm not quite sure why we played this map twice, but we did. So uh, I don't know. There, I think there was another repeat later on as well. But so we run in here. I'm running 52 again. Like I mentioned, the what you're going to be expecting is. Uh, mini if uh, if it zones. A good start on this map, I actually really like this map and mode combo and one thing that I do all the time is I will throw a point sensor on the other side of the Rainmaker because well, uh, what a lot of teams will do is rush the Rainmaker at the start so I will throw a point sensor so even if they pop or we get the pop we know where they're running to. Here I tried prioritizing getting the charger out as fast as possible because we've already learned from the Moray match that he is a, a force that needs to be removed immediately. Unfortunately his 10 attack buddy was in fact guarding him which I was not expecting. And then he ended up getting another kill on our Squiffer which was a little unfortunate. So here they have the Rainmaker. They're not really moving with it too much. We, they end up losing two. I'm throwing point sensors to keep people marked. Just const or covering the map. They start to try and move as a as a, in desperation, so 
we're just gonna keep getting the map. I'm gonna keep them marked. One thing I'm trying, I tried to do this entire scrim was to keep the the charger uh, marked, just so we know where he's at at all times. I ended up checking the map there because I was I could only see two of the people on their uh, on their team, the charger that was up on their plat, and then I think the end zap. And so I used I, I popped up the map to see if they were trying to flank behind us, and they did not. Charger ended up uh, spotting me, gets a kill. However, the fact that or because he decided to prioritize killing me instead, we were able to get a push to 16. And here I'm just watching a map, trying to provide information as I'm swimming back. I don't jump in like I, with even with the first game, I rarely super jump to people, and so I I'll, I stare at the map a lot to give information. I come over here because I expect them to try and drop down here with the rainmaker instead of going through their plat. I get one guy, and the Rainmaker is just holding on for dear life, and then the Tenant Tech comes over here and kills me, which puts us at one person alive, our Splash. However, she does have Inkjet, and she ends up using it, and I think she kills the Rainmaker with it. I think it looked like, it actually might have looked like the Rainmaker exploded now that I look at this. They have two down, so we need to take advantage of this as soon as possible, get the Rainmaker. Though, I'm not, I don't quite remember why we didn't pop it. I think it's just because we wanted to get the map before we moved it. Like I said, throwing point sensors to mark them. I think someone was trying to flank, so I throw a point sensor there to stop them from making a move. I think what I do here is I just stall it for a bit. I think we end up stalling it another time later in the match. The charger starts to bomb rush, and I continue to stay here. I end up falling down here a bit. There's a... I think all of them ended up chasing me down here. Uh, yeah, I'm the only one alive. They're missling me. They're all chasing me. I'm trying to at least like get rid of one of them. I end up getting killed. The uh, the end zap probably was barely struggling, like barely alive. They're holding on for dear life. Though I put the the rainmaker in, in a, a spot that's good for us to you know watch it and a little bit out of the way for them to get over there. They would have to go through their base to get back over there, or basically go towards us to get it. So just trying to cover, the charger I saw was in mid, so I'm trying to not advance too far in, make myself obvious. I mark the uh, the two people going for Rainmaker, and I'm sitting here waiting for him to move close. Get the jet, who climbs up to our plat. I get the Rainmaker, and then I don't think I get the charger. Yeah, I ended up getting killed by the bombs that he was throwing, but I do end up getting two people that were pushing the Rainmaker. Uh, I make the call the Charger is over on the right box, though I think something might have happened because I saw on the mini-map there that they were running away. Or my teammate was running away, rather. So here, we're just trying to keep the turf around the Rainmaker. We're not in a, a big hurry to move it. We're trying to force them to come towards us. I'm sitting here watching the right plat, making sure that they aren't trying to flank around. We let the Rainmaker reset. Two people go down, it's just me and our Squiffer. I'm sitting over here, throwing point sensors, just trying to keep them in a, in a worried state. I sit here and wait for them to make a move. I, I get the Rainmaker again, throw a point sensor to mark them. I end up using my baller. Uh, I end up getting the the charger, and then I get the ten attack, and that ends the match. So that was a much better map uh, match with 52. Like I said, that Moray one was probably the worst I've done with the 52 gal. Yeah, uh, yeah, Inkblot, Rainmaker did pretty decently. As you can see, it all around we did pretty well. Uh, this one was a pretty in, uh, pretty good match as well. The uh, we got Muscle Forge Tower Control. Uh, our player Tetsu, who is previously had been playing the Sloshing Machine and Swiffer, wanted to try out Clash Blaster here, and we were all for letting him try out new stuff. Like the whole point of scrims is to practice new things. However, the the only real problem it presented with is we were sort of down one turfing weapon. As as much as I like the Clash Blaster, it's not the best at turfing. I end up uh, fighting this end zap with armor because the 52 does end up breaking armor in one shot. 
However, the Lanzat backed up far enough away to where I was at the max range, which made the 52 more susceptible to the bad RNG that it is kind of known for. Basically, I was, my accuracy was going to be garbage at that far range, but I was not expecting him to stay that far back. Once again, another match where the Charger should be the, the, the main target, the thing that we need to get rid of as much as possible. I think at the start here, we decide that we need to flank the tower. Uh, one problem that a lot of teams make with this uh, map is they don't seem to realize that a flank can happen. And so they, they put a lot of priority on the tower's path instead of watching where the opponents can come from behind. And we kind of utilize that to our advantage. Throwing point sensors below their plat, or making it so if they drop down at all, they're going to be marked. We see someone over there, we're just going to let him be. I baller to pester the charger so we can actually move the tower. I push him back as far as I can. I make, uh, I mark him so they know where he's at. And providing the, the mark, not only it, uh, lets us know that he's back there, but it actually helps a teammate who's using Stingray, where they no longer have to try and figure out where the opponents are based off the little thermal ink-esque thing. Now they have a, an actual mark that shows them where they need to aim at. Here we can see that the NZAP tried to go up to our snipe to try and pressure everyone. I broke his armor but didn't chase after him because he was in a better spot. He could have easily have just turned her on me, kind of like he did there. And so I didn't want to challenge that. Jet ends up getting me. They're pushing tower again. And here we're down two and we lose another one. Trying to throw point sensors to keep an eye on who all is near the tower. I'm not trying to really engage. I'm trying to be very careful, and I say that as I jump down towards tower, trying to be very careful about the engagements I put myself into because the map is completely covered in their color, and so it is harder for me to do anything. I end up getting a few kills out of it, and we stop their push and make it to where the jet is the only one that's alive. I use my baller. I don't I don't remember the reasoning behind that. I think that was also, again, just to keep pressure on them. But at the time, only the jet was the one down there. I come up here, I start shooting up at the the charger to keep him occupied in hopes that we can actually get a push going. Fortunately, he just stopped paying attention to me and ended up killing the people on tower. So we're back to a situation where it was just me. I go back to the same spot here and I just wait. Probably should have been covering the map as they were all on their snipe and had to have come back in. However, it was, uh, it was a bit more important to try and provide a safe spot for my teammates to jump, but they just didn't jump to me, so it ended up being kind of worthless. But at, uh, at the moment, my thought process was that I would provide a safe jump for people that are trying to get back in, and they just did not utilize it. So they're aware of where I'm at. I'm aware of where they're at. I get triple teamed here. I probably should have used the ball to escape rather than trying to use it to kill like I did. Here we get the we see the charger. I throw a point sensor at him. It doesn't mark him, but we have someone chasing after him. They end up dying, and so now we're back down to two down. The charger's up there. I try to rush him. I nearly die, so I back up. I use my baller to give myself some health back, and then I push myself up back up to the mid. Throw a point sensor up to their snipe to see if the charger's moving over, back over there. And here's where we were like, okay, something needs to happen. We need to make a push now. So I jump up here. The charger's down below on their snipe, so I decided to take this moment to try and kill him. Get two out of it. Throw a point sensors to mark the left locker to see if there's anyone by the tower. Someone was saying that there was someone over there, but it turns out the person they were talking about was actually this end zap in the zone that I killed. I balled to put, help push the tower. Uh, unfortunately, that the, whoever was falling ended up shooting me once, which did enough knockback to push the baller off tower. We ended up getting the lead anyway because he was the only one up, and that was the match where our own, our real only push was the one that got us the lead. And that's a, uh, I, I don't know, it's there's matches like that where you you have to put a priority on getting rid of key opponents, and in this case, it was the charger who needed to go down. It, just every time. And then this, yeah, this is a repeat. So, Moray again. Moray zones. 
and here, yeah, I played mini. I only played mini once on this map and mode, so I wanted to see how it would go if I played it again. So, like I mentioned, a lot of what you're going to see with this is I spend the first start of the match just uh, getting missiles to provide information as to where the team is going at the start of the match. So here we can see they're very, they're still very close together up on their snipe and on their plat. They haven't really moved down as far as we have, so I provide that information and three of them go down immediately. And here I jump down into zone, paint up their snipe so we can get up there. And now I'm once again just covering their side to get missiles. One important thing with zones, no matter if you're playing in solo or you're playing with a team, the first thing you should do when you have control is push forward. Make it so their side of the base is in your color as well, making it easier for you to spot where they're coming from. Just having the zones is never enough. You always need to have more color on their side uh, as opposed to theirs. So we lose two people. I'm sitting here providing a jump to peop uh, for everyone on the team. And I'm getting this guy who tried to camp the jump for uh, my teammate's jump. We end up getting him. I'm searching around. I'm making callouts, which is... A lot of times you'll see me not like fire missiles, and it's because a lot of the time I'm just saying where they are and I'm looking for a bigger clump of people, but at the same time still just pointing and just telling people where they are. And that's that. So that is, in fact, the entire scrim. Like I said, it didn't last very long. They ended up having to leave. But yeah, so hopefully that gives you a decent look at me playing the mini and the 52 gal. So thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you all later.